Right chaps, I have a request. Now before we start, if you cast your minds back when we were learning how to import data into the model, we had a look at filtering and previewing and during those exercises we filtered out from the from the sales table in the region month ID southwest 9 and southwest 10. So if we look at that now in the sales table, we'll see that there is indeed not a Southwest 9 or a Southwest 10. And that's absolutely fine. That's how it should be. However, by doing so, it's had an effect on the screenshots in my user guide. So we're going to put those back. Now, the bug that we're currently experiencing in certain versions of, of Excel has made this very problematic. Ordinarily, what we should be able to do is just select the Design tab and go to Table Properties. And then from here, again, select the Report view in from this drop-down and be able to put those filtered items back in again. But we can't do that. Therefore, we're going to have to employ another workaround. And it looks a little bit scary, but if you just follow this, we can unfilter those two options. All you have to do is place your cursor in front of the word where and just drag down and just press delete and then use your backspace key so there aren't any spaces and that's it. Then you just have to click on save. So just to recap, what we've done is just put back the two filtered items that we'd filtered out in a previous exercise. I'm sorry if that looks a bit scary. It should be a lot easier than that. And now if we go to Region ID and scroll down to Southwest, we'll see that we've got Southwest 9 and Southwest 10 back in. So I hope that's not too problematic for you, but it needs to be put back in place in order for all the screenshots in the user guide to be accurate. And now with that over and done with, we can continue with creating measures. Thanks guys. Welcome back chaps. So in this exercise we're going to be having a look at creating measures in the data model. I'm currently on page 33 of the user guide. So the calculation area is displayed under the data columns in the data model window. If yours isn't displayed then from the home tab it's just in the view group and there's a button there for calculation area you can just turn it on and turn it off. Measures in Excel 2010 and 2016 or if you're using Excel 2013 calculator fields can be created in the calculation area in the data model. Just like calculated columns they appear in the pivot table field list too and they're usually used in the values drop zone regardless really of what table they were created in. So let's start by selecting a cell in the calculation area. I'm just going to resize this just to give myself a little bit more room. So we'll enter a descriptive name for the measure and it's going to be total standard cost. Now you'll notice there as well the name doesn't appear in the cell it actually appears up in the formula bar. Now measure names have to contain a colon and an equal sign. You'll see a difference there that we didn't start this off with an equal sign but when we're creating measures in the data model window in the calculation area, it's mandatory to follow the descriptive name with a colon and an equal sign. So our objective here is to total or sum the extended amount column in the sales table. So we're going to type in the DAX function sum and IntelliSense kicks in and we can use the tab key to enter that. It provides an opening parenthesis and then can you see IntelliSense this time is listing all of the table names and their associated columns in alphabetical order. So if we type in sales, all of the sales columns appear in the list and we want extended amount which is the third option down. So I'm using my down arrow and then tab. The last thing is to insert the closing parenthesis and hit the enter key. So there's our first measure guys. Next thing we have to do is apply a bit of formatting. So just a couple of things to note. 
that when we're creating measures it is best practice to specify the table name of where the column exists even when creating measures in that given table. So although we're in the sales table and this is where the measure is being created, we still have to specify that it is in the sales table. It's not an actual requirement, but it is just best practice to do that. So we'll create another measure and we'll just select the cell underneath, total standard cost. And this time let's sum the product standard cost so we'll start by providing a descriptive measure name, which is total list price. Colon, remember, and then the equal sign. And then the DAX function or expression that we'll be using is sum. So I'll hit the tab key, it provides the opening parenthesis again. And we're looking for the product standard cost in the sales table. This time I'll select it with my mouse and then hit the tab key and end with a closing parenthesis and hit the enter key. Once again, let's provide some formatting and we'll reduce to zero decimal places. So our next measure is going to be gross profit and we're going to use total standard cost and total list price to create a new measure. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So I'm selecting the cell under total list price and let's enter a descriptive name for our measure, which is gross profit. So we'll enter our measure, which is total standard cost. But as you can see, IntelliSense kicks in yet again. These are DAX functions and our two measures indicated by this symbol. So total standard cost is the one we want. I'll use tab. Now, I didn't open a square bracket. I cheated a little bit there because I know from using the tab key that it will put those opening and closing parentheses in for me. And then we're just subtracting total list price. So start typing total list. It's highlighted. Use the tab key and hit enter. So we have just created a new gross profit measure which utilises the two measures that we'd previously created. Last thing we have to do is a little bit of formatting. And just a note that when referencing measures within other measures, it's not necessary to specify the table name. Our fourth example will be profit percent. So we'll start with a descriptive name of profit percent, colon equals and we'll be dividing gross profit by total standard cost. So we start to type in gross profit, there it is. You can use a space or not, it's up to you. And enter total standard cost. So there's total standard cost. I'm using the tab key and hitting enter. And our last task is percentage and we'll reduce that to one decimal place. So I think I'll wrap up there guys, but you can see there that we provided good descriptive names for our measures. The syntax is a colon and an equal sign. And we saw that we could create new measures based on measures that we'd already created. So next up, we're going to use those measures to display in pivot tables. So I'll see you in the next video lecture.